Now here's a system of equations that we don't want to solve with substitution, but it doesn't line up quite as nicely as the last one. Last time we had the value of x had the same, er, the term with x had the same coefficient in both equations, but we don't have that here. Our x and our y don't don't line up that nicely. But remember, we can multiply or divide both sides of the equation by the same thing and preserve the equality, the same as we always have. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So I can multiply this or this by anything I want or divide by anything I want uh, and still get another equation that's true. So I want to point out that if I multiply equation 1 by 2, then I will have the same number in front of my y. So the sign's different, but we'll deal with that in a minute. I just want to get the same numeral, the same number there. Um, so let's take equation number 1 and multiply it by 2. And when we take equation number 1 and multiply it by 2, I get 4x plus 10y equals negative 38. And I'm going to call this equation number 3. Now I'm just going to bring down my equation number 2 just so that I have them lined up nicely so we can look at them. And I haven't changed it, so I'm still going to call it equation number 2. Now, I have the same number in front of my y's in both equations. Um, so I can either add or subtract to get rid of them. Since the signs are different, we're going to add to get rid of them. When the signs are the same, we subtract to get rid of them. So I'm going to add these two equations together. And when I add them together, this 10 and negative 10 are going to combine and go to 0 which is what I want. I want to eliminate a variable, and in this case I'm going to eliminate the y. So I'm going to, t going to take equation number 3 and add equation number 2. 4x plus 3x is 7x. I already know my y's are going to cancel, so I'm not going to leave a space for them. And negative 38 plus 24 gives us negative 14. And now when I divide both sides by 7, I get x equals negative 2. So that gives me my x. To find the y is exactly the same as it was before. I now take what I found for x and sub it back in. I could put it in equation 1, equation 2, or equation 3. But equation 3 has bigger numbers in it. We multiplied by 2 to get bigger numbers in it probably not going to use equation 3 because I want to do as much math in my head as I possibly can um, so I want to keep those numbers smaller. So I'm going to sub it back into one of these two equations. It really doesn't matter which. I'm going to go ahead and sub it into equation number 1. So I'm going to say sub x equals negative 2 in equation number 1. Now when I sub it into equation number 1, I'm going to get 2x, but I know x to be negative 2, so I'm going to put bracket negative 2, plus 5y equals negative 19. That gives me negative 4 plus 5y equals negative 19. I want to get rid of this negative 4, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. When I add 4 to this side, I simply have 5y. When I add 4 to this side, I'm going to get negative 15. And I divide both sides by 5, which gives me y equals negative 3. So therefore, the solution is negative 2, negative 3. If I were to graph these lines, they would cross at the point negative 2, negative We're going to do three. one more example with a system of equations that we're going to solve by elimination. And now this is the case where we don't have the same coefficient in front of either of our two variables, and there is no one number that I can multiply by. I can't multiply 6 by a nice number to get 8. I can't multiply 5 by a nice number to get 7. And by nice number, I mean a whole number. Uh, so what we have to do is think that we're going to have to multiply both of these equations. 
So I want to find the lowest multiple um, of each of these things, and then I'll probably pick the smaller one, so to try and keep my numbers small. Both 8 and 6, the lowest common multiple is 24. Um, 8 times 3 is 24, and 6 times 4 is 24. So the smallest number that both 8 and 6 go into is 24. So I could multiply each equation um, to get 24 in front of the x. Or the smallest number both 5 and 7 go into is 35. So I could multiply both equations and get a 35 in front of my y. Um, usually I decide to stick with the one that's smaller, so I'm going to make the number in front of x say 24. So if I take a look at equation number 1, uh, I need to multiply equation number 1 by 3 in order to get a 24 in front of the x, because 8 times 3 is 24. We don't care about the other numbers just yet, I just want to make my x's line up nice with that number in front of them. So I'm going to take equation number 1 and multiply it by 3. And when I do that, I get 24x plus 15y equals 36. And I'm going to call, call that equation number 3. Now, I want to get 24 in front of the x in this equation as well, because then once I have the same thing in front of the x, I can subtract or add and get rid of the x's altogether. So I'm going to multiply equation number 2 by 4, and I will have 24x minus 28y equals negative 136. And that I'm going to call equation number 4. Now to get rid of the x's, they have the same sign in front of them, so to make them go away, I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take my equation number 3 and subtract equation number 4. Now it doesn't matter which order I subtract in. I could have taken equation number 4 and subtracted equation number 3. It's really not going to matter. But pay careful attention to your integers. 15y subtract negative 28y. That double negative in the middle, subtract negative, is going to change that to a positive. So what I'm really having is 15 plus 28y, which gives me 43y. And we got a double negative coming up again. 36 subtract negative 136, which really means 36 plus 136, which is 172. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 43, and believe it or not, it goes in evenly four times. So y equals 4. Now when it comes to finding my next, uh, my value of x, I have a choice. I can sub it into 1, 2, 3, or 4 to find the value of x. But 3 and 4 I've multiplied to give big numbers, so I'm probably going to leave those alone. And most of the time I like to sub back in where I don't have negative numbers. There's a couple of negatives in here. I drop negatives all the time, make mistakes with negatives. So I'm going to sub it back into equation number 1. So I'm going to say sub y equals 4 in equation number 1. So I have 8x plus 5 times y, but I know y is 4, equals 12. And that's 8x plus 20 equals 12. I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides, which leaves me with 8x on this side, and 12 subtract 20 is negative 8. And divide both sides by 8 gives me x equals negative 1. So therefore, the solution is negative 1, comma 4. If I felt so inclined, I could graph these two functions, and they would cross at negative 1, 4.